Okay, well, welcome everybody to the Matters of the Heart chat room. This is going to be fun. Uh, my name is Paula Peckham. I write historical romance. My um, third book in my series just came out this past week. It's called Accepted. So I love all things romance as a kid. Well, not kid, kid, but like in high school, um, romance was like my go-to thing to read. So I, um, I just love still can't get tired of it i don't think so many different tropes and they never get old so anyway the five authors that we have here tonight if you'll kind of wave your hand again so everybody can see we have penny mcginnis there we go and sharon tweet yes and melissa wardwell yes and hope toller dowerty did i say the last name correctly it's like D-O-C-K, Doherty. That's okay. 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 And then Cindy Huff. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So um, these five ladies are here tonight to um, just chat with you, to uh, answer any questions that you have, to, um, you know, give you any wisdom they have to share. So um, I want to thank everybody for being here, first of all. But then I think I would like to start and maybe let's just go in alphabetical order by your first name so that we don't talk over each other so much. So I guess that means, Cindy, you'll start. Tell us three things about you that we wouldn't necessarily know. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I've written uh, nine books uh, and only six of them have been published. Uh, I grew up in, as a military brat, so you either make friends quick or you are very lonely. And uh, we just, after living in Illinois for 50 years, moved to Oklahoma. God said downsize and move, and so here we are. All right. Thank you, Cindy. I guess our next one will be Hope. Um, I... I I'm living in North Carolina. I'm a native North Carolinian. Um, we have four children and uh, twin boys are captains in the army. So, and uh, my seventh book is coming out in January. Seven books, my goodness. Everybody is so very prolific. This is great. All right, our next one then will be Melissa. Um. I'm Melissa. <laughs> um, I've been, I have 13 stories to my name, but I have 16 books because I'm part of a couple of other anthologies. Um, I am um, a minister at our church underneath our head pastor. Um, and don't know a third thing <laughs> um <laughs> i'm so boring um you have pets do you have children do you okay what? there we go uh my brain kind of froze for a second um <laughs> i guess that would be a third thing i'm adhd it was very recently partially diagnosed and now i mean it's nice to know that my brain is not completely crazy <laughs> <laughs> yes but it's nice to have, you know, so I forget. And sometimes I have to do what my kids call reboot. And that's what you guys just witnessed. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's good that you have the skills to deal with it. That's good. All right. Um, let's see. That will take us to Penny. Ten tell us three things that we would not necessarily know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my husband and I live in Southwest Ohio and we have five kids and 11 grandkids. And that keeps us pretty busy. Um, I've published two novels and I have a novella coming out. I have a devotional published and I'm most excited about the children's book that I just had come out. All of the books are through Mount Zion Ridge Press and the children's book. The illustrator is my daughter, Hannah, which is very exciting. And it's also bilingual because it's in English and Spanish. So we're very excited about that. And I also had... I also had cataract surgery this morning, so if my eye looks funny, that's why. You look great. 
<laughs> uh, it's amazing that they just send you home after something yep. like that. That feels you had a scary. very long nap. So. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, Sharon, tell us your three things. The three things about me. Can you hear me? We can. Excellent. Thank you. Um, let's see. I'm originally from Southern California, but I moved myself cross country to Northeastern Iowa when I was 21, just for because. And then shortly thereafter, moved myself down to the Kansas City area. And I've been here for over, it's been a really long time. Um, so that's something not everybody knows about me. Um, I'm a widow. That's fun. Not. And let's see, I have four books published and two holiday anthologies coming out later this month. Mm. So both of you that said you had anthologies, are they um, romance stories or, or a specific theme? Uh, mine are, um, I have, well, my story is romance, but the one anthology was written by a local writers group, which I recently became president of. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, the other one was, uh, there was a group of bloggers that, um, it was Heart Wings. I don't know if you guys had ever heard of them, um, but I was a Heart Wings blogger when they first started and they just had taken a combination of our best blogs and put them all together. And I have got like six or eight of them in there and they turned it into like a devotional. Oh, so, cool. Very good. And then what about yours, Sharon? So I have two holiday anthologies that I'm a part of this um, this month and A Merry Heart, which comes out on the 7th. It is all Christian romance. So that's an all Christian romance anthology. And then Snowflakes and Sleigh Bells is a mix of genres, but my story is a romance, a holiday romance. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, um, we do have a few questions lined up to ask, but if anyone else has something specific they are just burning to ask, jump right in and say something. You know, that's what we're all here to do is to just chat. So anybody? All right, I'll go ahead and ask one of mine. And then if you do have something, something pops into your mind, <clears throat> you can just type it in the chat and I'll read it to them. So, um, Let's talk about how you guys come up with what setting you're going to use for your book. And Penny, if you'll start us, we'll go from there, staying in alphabetical order. If you have something to say, and if you don't, you can pass on that question. So go ahead, Penny. I'll be happy to talk about that. This is my book, um, Home Away From Home. It's book two in the Abbott Island series. And Abbott Island is where I chose my setting. It is modeled after an island in Lake Erie, Ohio. Um, a lot of people don't know Ohio has its own islands. And we go to Kelly's Island a lot for vacation and just nice day trips. And one time when I was coming home from there, I told my husband, I said, I'd love to set my novels up there because it's like, it's a small town on the island. So that's perfect for romance. Um, I love small towns. Also being on an island, you have the beach, which is a plus. And this particular island has a lot of interesting um, wildlife and nature and a lot of nature trails. And I, I am... I very much enjoy studying nature and learning about it being outside. So that was some great research and fun for me to do for the story. But uh, it just seemed like the characters just fit right in. And even the character, the main character in Home Away From Home is modeled after a lady I met on the island who ran the kayak business there. And so that was fun to kind of uh, make up what her life was like. <laughs> So she doesn't know it, but you know, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know her name. So it's okay. I picked my own, but it's a lot of fun. I think settings are very important and can play as another character in the book because yes. there's, there's, they can be so rich. And with it being a series, it just seemed like the, the island just kind of evolved as, as I went with the story. Cool. 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 Okay. What about you, Sharon? Do you have any specific thoughts about setting? And you can pass if you want to. 
Well, I, so I, the six days uh, or six pack days of intention, which is part of the um, days of series, the days of series is all set up in Michigan. And I chose it because I wanted it to be near water, but not the ocean. I wanted there to be um, snow in the winter time because that's where the seven days of Christmas starts is at Christmas time. And I wanted there to be snow and um, just it, it fit with uh, my character's backstory where they went to school. And so I wanted it to be just kind of, that seemed to fit all of those little bits of criteria for, um, for a setting. And I just, I think it's beautiful up there. Okay, cool. Very good. All right. What about you, Cindy? Well, uh, for my book, New Embrace, which is actually, uh, it was originally New Duet and it was finaled in the C-List in 2018. And when the publisher went out of business, I decided to uh, publish it myself. New Embrace is actually in the city I lived in Illinois. And the reason I set it there was there's so much interesting architecture. There was a art community, which uh, Isabella in here is an artist. But more than anything is I didn't have to research the setting because I thought the plot was the thing I really wanted to focus on. All I had to do was ask my husband now, is that road a one-way street? Am I putting <laughs> the building on the right corner? Because I had no sense of direction. But I really wanted to focus on the plot. And I wrote it in such a way that people thought they were in a small town. Well, Aurora is a town of 200,000 people. So I still had that small town feeling in my story with what I was doing with my plot. So it's New Embrace. What about you, Hope? Um, I, I think for me, the plot, the story uh, dictates uh, or, or comes from the location. My first one is set in Ireland, um, partially set there. And so um, it's it started there from a, um, a daydream that I had. And then um, what my suspense uh, came from an idea when I was riding my bike by an abandoned house near us. We live out in the country. And then the, the book that I'm featuring tonight is this Forever Home. It's the third in a series. Um, there's four siblings and this is the third sibling and it's set in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is where I was single. I met my husband and it was really fun to think about that time 35 years ago. Uh, when I was single in a, in a kind of big city and just remembering all the things we did and places we went kind of thing and just uh, be single again in a fictional <laughs> kind of way. So for me, uh, the location is really important, but it comes out of the story. Cool. Yeah. What about you, Melissa? Uh, when I first started writing, I was picking places that I know, so around my hometown. Um, but the um, my second novel um, was Savannah, Georgia, because that's one of my favorite places to be and visit. But the last few books have been chosen for me. The location has been chosen. Um, the publisher that I'm with for these books is called Celebrate Lit, and they came up with this concept where um, they would create fictional islands. Um, I did the Independence Islands, which is off the coast oh. of Georgia. And then oh, these, this book, tonight my featured book is, um, oh, you can't see it, uh, An Unexpected Gift. And it takes place on a fictional set of islands called the Swamali Islands. They're in the South Pacific. So it's very tropical and uh, I had a lot of fun just really researching because like some of the others have said, I think location helps push, um, helps push the story along. And it, it definitely, our locations influence our own lives, just like our own pasts influence our lives. So um, it's really fun just word or world building mm -hmm. off of these locations and, um, so yeah, it was, it's been kind of fun to go to the South Pacific and where it's kind of a melting pot of um, the Samoa Islands and a little bit of New, Le New Zealand and you've got Tahiti and Fiji there. And so it's kind of nice to just kind of pull in from all of those um, to create your own 
place. I wish I could visit it. <laughs> right. Well, you know, that's one thing authors will do. If you want to go visit somewhere, just decide that you're going to write your next book about it and then you can put it on your taxes. <laughs> that yeah. trip was research, right? Um, and they yeah. do say that if you write what you know, it's going to feel more authentic. So I think it's very common that a lot of authors, at least in the beginning, start with you know where they're from because you can add that specific flavor with the words you say or what the weather does and stuff that is somewhat like you know I live in Texas and so um other Texans will recognize the things I'm writing about and um you know it's real if I tried to write something about you know being a lobster fisher person up in Maine, like I wouldn't have this, I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> so, you know, I think it helps if, if you've actually been there before. Yes. Okay, we do have a question that has popped up. So let's get that. Um, this is from Nancy. Nancy, wave your hand. I thought you were, no, you got your camera turned off. Anyway, it says, Penny, how many books are in your series? If someone doesn't read them in chronological order, how do you share information from one book into the other, or do your books stand on their own? Okay, um, there are three total, two of them are public, published, and the third one I am working on right now, and it should be out, um, I believe it's August next year in 2024. And if you don't read them in chronological order, um, the way I share my information is that I just weave it in through like conversation and um, maybe a little bit of backstory. Um, and I do think you could read them as standalone, but I think you would miss a lot of each story. The same char main characters are in each book, but I choose two, uh, the two with the romance, you know, as the main, main, main characters. And they, the other ones will be the background, but basically uh, they're all friends or they're related to each other in some way. And those those people continue through the whole series. Like on this third one, um, I'm down to the last set of couples. But what I do is like in the, in the first novel, I mentioned briefly about who will be the couple in the second novel. There's just like a hint of it. Same thing with the second novel, I did a a very brief conversation between two of the characters of who would be the couple in the third novel. Now I do have the novella coming out in December that is is part of an anthology and it is also set on Abbott Island and it's a couple that were mentioned in the second book so they'll be in there. So so basically I try to make if you did read it you would read about the the particular couple that is in the middle of the romance um, with the other people in there but I think it would be best if you read the whole series because then it would make more sense. Does that That's make good. sense? It's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, I think that maybe a lot of people, if you write for an anthology, it could be a short story, it could be a novella, depending on how many other contributors are in the anthology. But um, it's easy to pick somebody you've already written about and like, this is just like two years later because it's already there you know right. them and so you know it's just you don't have to start from scratch on that and a lot okay. of people say it's fun to to see the people again yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. right or if it's like a side character it's like oh i mm -hmm. loved that character I'm, right. I'm glad to see their story you know yeah yeah um okay we also have a note over here um it's it's uh four up in the chat if you haven't been paying attention but there is a drawing and so uh, Paige has added a link in there if you want to click on that and, and enter for that drawing. And then we also, thank you, Sandra. Sandra put a link in there to the bookstore where all of the featured authors will have their books and Christmas is coming. So here's some good time to get some gifts. Um, okay, let's see. Um, our next question is from Star. Where's Star, Star, Star? Oh, there you are, okay. Um, have, and this is to anybody, have your characters ever visited places you haven't and how do you work through that? Mm 
Let's I see. guess I didn't answer that one. I was going to say, I'm trying to pick who hasn't talked in a while. So yeah. I was about to uh, say your name, Alyssa. <laughs> um, since the locations for the last, the location I've been writing in doesn't even exist. Um, clearly, I've, you know, we can't quite um, go and see it like I could when I wrote my Savannah, Finding Hope in Savannah, I went to Savannah and I got to see it and I got to enjoy the food and and the atmosphere and that kind of thing. But you can't with these. And we we had this struggle the because the the author that came up with the concept for the Independence Islands, she lives in California. So she's thinking of Catalina Island, right? And so when she says ferry, she's thinking of really big boats. I live in Michigan. So when I think of an island, I think of Mackinac, where mm -hmm. our ferries are people only, <laughs> you know, to get out to there. And so her and I, I'm like, no, a ferry is for people and bikes. She's like, no, a ferry has cars. And I thought, oh boy. So like that's been kind of the biggest issue is trying to navigate how we're doing this um so but once we got through all of that it's kind of fun just to be able to um get to work with each other to word build or to world build mm -hmm. um the independence islands there's there was five of us and we all had our own ideas and we all we all had to collaborate and then for the Somali islands there's nine of us and so again we've got to collaborate hey if if i put in this kind of hotel i have to sh be sure to share that information with the other authors in case they want to use that hotel on that particular island as well um sounds complicated I still, <laughs> I still i still did a lot that kind of mimicked a mackinaw <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. That's what you know. It's That's hard. what you see. Right. So along those lines, um, do any of you ever create <clears throat> like a mood board? They People put these on Pinterest a lot and their followers can kind of follow what's going with their story as they post different, you know, this is what the house will look like. This is what my character will dress like. I mean, have you ever created anything like that either in Pinterest for other people to see or just for yourself to kind of get yourself into the mood of the story. Hope oh, I saw nice. you kind of nodding. Yes, I, I do have boards on Pinterest for each one of um, my novels just to show people what kinds of things I had in my mind. For example, one of my characters is a, a children's clothing designer. So I had, um, clothes that I had made for my children when they were little. So pictures of those kinds of things and uh, a particularly um, kind of out there character, what she might look like with what she wears and including um, accessories like glasses, different things like that. So I think it's fun to um, have that, those kinds of helps for your readers to sort of see what's in your mind. Yes, we have the words in the book, but also just to, just to, pull up pictures so that they can see more of what's in your mind. Mm. That's good. Cindy, have you ever used that? I am. I saw there's another question. I am such a pantster that I have to keep notes of what color their hair is because I'm just <laughs> in the moment creating the scene. I've had characters talk to me and in one of my historical novels, my character kind of changed uh, genders on me. And, and so <laughs> I have those those kind of moments more than I've tried. I actually wrote an outline for a book I'm working on and a, and a historical I worked on. And it sort of never really went that way, but it kind of got my mind thinking. Uh, and I, and I, discovered something really unusual, especially when you're looking at book covers. My first three, three, four books had blonde males with blue eyes. My husband's you have a type. Blue eyes. <laughs> you have a type. A type. <laughs> but you can't find covers. You cannot find the model covers with blonde hair 
in in my historicals because they were western dressed but just trying to find a blonde hair that you can give to the you know mm -hmm. to whoever's illustrator whoever say this is what i want them sort of what i want them to look like is very difficult but dark haired guys my bearded guys all sorts of that you can find it so my later what novels guys? have darker haired guys and and not new embrace but the book that's coming out in two weeks um loving the dog groomer he has uh, a beard in that one and the one i'm working on the guy has a whole different look because well you can find those and yeah they're kind of modeled after other people like my my sons they're, they're modeled after someone of their looks are modeled after them but blonde hair and blue eyed as much as I adore blonde hairs as well. <laughs> They're gray hair now. It was um, just hard to find. Yeah, cover, yeah, that's, cover that art. Is, that's a problem. So, Sharon, let's move to you. This also was a, a question that popped up over here, and we will come back to Michael's in just a minute. But since you brought it up a little bit, Cindy, um, Felicia is asking who is a pantser and who is a plotter, and if there are any of you in here who are not quite sure what that means. Um, the plotters obviously kind of like make an outline and know what's happening and have the moments that they're trying to connect together. And a pantser just kind of like, like sits down and flies by the seat of their pants, which um, feels like anxiety inducing to me. <laughs> so you can tell where I come fall on this, but Sharon, where are you? I'm definitely a pantser. I have a general idea. I, I know who my characters are going to be and a general idea of who they are, um, uh, where we're going to start and where we're going to finish and maybe a few ideas of what's going to happen in the middle. But honestly, I fly by the seat of my pants on my stories and they just kind of, they, I get very excited, A, to do the backstory stuff and do the research and do the world building, even though I do contemporary. Um, but I get very excited when I'm doing all those things and when I'm writing because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, like it. I, actually, I actually have, you know, it's funny because um, Six Pack Days of Intention is a result of my pantsing because I told during um, Illuminating Days of Discovery, book two of the Days of series, I told these characters, do not, do, no, no, no. And they did not, they, they completely ignored me. They completely ignored me and I have a whole different book as a result of it, and I'm so delighted. I absolutely love the story and I love what happens. And so I actually love the excitement of what's gonna happen because as you're reading it and you don't know what's gonna happen when I was writing it, neither did I, and I like that part. Oh, that's fun, that's fun. Well, um, if, you're, if you're an author in here, and I do recognize some names that are authors, there is a good book that describes those two things and it's called take off your pants which is a real <laughs> eye-opening kind of it's like what <laughs> i think her name is libby something i can't remember the last name now but but it discusses um how to how to either be the pantser or the plotter and maybe make those things kind of mix together um well we do have another question to answer but before we change to that one do any of the rest of you have a thing to say about being a pantser or a plotter I'm a pantser for sure, but oh I do gosh. have an idea of the story, like Sharon said. Um, but I like to listen to my characters. I just really tune into them. And and a confession is that when I've gone back to Kelly's Island, I kind of expect to see some of them. <laughs> it becomes so real to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. Yes, my husband has heard me discussing stuff with the book with one of my critique partners. And it's like we were kind of arguing. And he's like, you know, these people aren't real, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. So, well, kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Did you answer this question, Melissa? Yeah, I just said I like to affectionately call myself a plotster. Okay. So I do deep character dives, like, like their trauma, their hair color, their eye color. And I get it with the type. All of my guys, for the most part, are dark hair, dark eyes, which is what my husband is. Um, but I try to mix it up once in a while, <laughs> um, but I get into even their faith, where they're at in their faith, if there is any faith, what kind of trauma has they, have they experienced? Um, because I, you know, our pasts and our, and our upbringings, 
they affect, like I said earlier, they affect how our life goes yes. if we're not careful. So uh -huh. I feel like if I have a solid character development for my characters and I have a solid location setting development, everything else just falls into place. And I love it when the characters disobey. Um, my last book of the in, for the Independence Islands, um, one character automatically popped up. I knew I wanted a character to come in and create a little bit of trouble for my romantic couple. And um, so I'm writing and it, he's, you know, he's just this tall Jason Momoa-like kind of guy. And she's like, hmm, nice. And <laughs> And come to, and then all of a sudden, I, the voices in my head says, this is her fiance's brother, long lost brother. And I thought, oh no, this is mean. No, we can't do this. We can't do this. And sure enough, there the fingers go. And all of a sudden, <laughs> yep, by the end of the book, there is a new character. <laughs> so um, that's, I love that part too. But I call myself a plotster. Well, you guys, I, I take off my hat to you. I I fill out my six scenes, my my turning points. I have a spreadsheet with my word count, so I because I way overwrite. I always have to cut at the end, so I could be four chapters in and realize I'm not even to my turning point number one yet. You know, so that does not work for me. But you know, kudos to you, Cindy. Did you answer this one? I can't remember. What? Whether you're, did, are you the one, you, are you the one that's, no, it was Penny. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I wasn't keeping track of who answered what, uh, whether you're a pantser or a plotzer. Has everyone answered that question? Okay. Well, we're going to move to a spicy question. So Michael says, what would you say is a good argument against including erotic scenes in a romance novel since spicy scenes are so popular these days? Other than the fact that your publisher will probably tell you no, but <laughs> why would you support that? I think I there's think... a lot to be said. Oh, sorry. Go, Go ahead, Hope. For for the the tension and you know just the, and I think it is so sexy when I see a man who has his sleeves rolled up part way. I mean, I just. It, and you leave things to your imagination. You don't have to spill it all right there. I just think there's a lot to be said for, you know, <laughs> the, the the tension, the, oh, something behind the scenes. Plus, you know, I just, I, I think about the people who are going to be reading this. <laughs> so yeah. that sort of dictates mine. There's also. a lot to say for yearning. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Cindy? Yeah. I was, also, too, you're, you've got your reader, and you want that reader to to cheer for your characters. You want them to feel like their relationship is believable. But when you start adding uh, descriptions of body parts that, uh, you know, can, well, things that arouse, it sometimes draws you way out of what it is your characters are trying to learn or do uh, in the stories. Because if it's all about sex, then you don't really have a story. And if you've ever read, and sometimes the book doesn't go the way I think it's going to go, and you you read a book with that kind of tension in it, then there's not a whole lot else left to the plot. It isn't just about I feel bad about myself or I'm not good enough or or uh, I've got these life decisions to make and you just make me feel at peace. You know, and as Hope said, uh, oh, I wish, hmm, you know, as you see there, as you said, rolled up sleeves and things like this, that that not knowing and thinking, there's just so much more depth to that because otherwise, other, the other way when you go that way you really um for me as a reader you sort of spoil the whole intensity of 
whatever it is the individual characters are learning. If you've got mm -hmm. characters, the woman that's more strong-willed, especially when we write historicals, a strong-willed woman always irritates a man. And so you've got that whole thing playing back and forth. And if it's all about uh, the erotic parts, it just, as I said, it, it, it's, in my opinion, it's harder. It's east. It's takes less creativity to do that than it yeah. does to build the tension and bring them to their happily ever after with closed doors and all the readers go at the yes. end. Yes. Yes. I had to uh, <laughs> go ahead, Melissa. I said, amen. Oh, yeah. well, and really just to add to that, romance isn't sex. Mm -hmm. Like sex is the result of longing and lust. Like we have to, if we're writing romance, we got to understand what romance really looks like. And the ultimate romance is that like everybody shies away from uh, the Song of Solomon or Song of Songs or whatever they, your Bible calls it. But it's like, that is beautiful romance, the poetry and the, um, and even though we know what's happening, um, there's, there is romance is honoring your partner yes. and sex doesn't always honor your partner. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's just a fleeting moment. <laughs> so that's kind of why. Yeah. No, well, it's not necessary. Yeah. I agree with all of that. When uh, my first book was turned into an audio book, the woman who was narrating sent me a message on chapter 13, whatever it was. She's like, that was by far the best chapter I've ever had, you know, and it, nothing happened. She's yep. just looking at him, you know, so you can put a lot of tension in there if you, you know, just try to remember how that felt back in the day. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, well, we do have several more questions over here, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. Star wants to know, back to the Pinterest storyboard ideas, um, is it okay to use anything, or does it have to be copyright-free public domain pictures, which my guess is, since you're not making any money off of it, you can, but I'm going to see what everybody else has to say. Well, I'll start. Uh, only because I took a class from Edie Melson. And you have to be sure if you, if there's a copyright that you have all the uh, appropriate things, I think somewhere on the Pinterest, you know, where they could look deeper and see the copyright as I'll mention. Uh, and a lot of times you can use your own pictures, mm -hmm. you know, that you think will uh, share your characters. I've made memes and I've used, uh, my historicals I use, pictures of my ancestors nobody knows who they are but they're my pictures or I use backgrounds from places I've been uh when I I do a contemporary uh if you have pictures of dogs if you have dogs and your dogs fit within whatever you're doing your your on your storyboard or your meme or whatever you know that will work you can pay for copyrighted pictures uh by joining some of those different uh Oh, I can't even think of their names, but there's a, there's a whole, there's three or four specific, uh, like photo Pixab places you can Pixabay go. Pixabay or Pixabay or, you know, yeah. And, yeah. There's, there's, there's the stuff. free one. And then there's the ones that you pay. And once you paid for the picture, it's yours to use, but you have to read the copyright. Can I put it, you know, Pinterest boards are fine, but I can't use it for like, say, putting on a billboard or whatever. It, it may be specific. Just as long as you're following that. But as much as you can use your own stuff, you know, or the or the free stuff, and most of the free stuff on Pick a Bay is you can use that in your memes. You can use it on your Pinterest board. Uh, I have Canva. Most of the pictures I use from Canva, I can use in memes. I could put on a Pinterest board. I could use for a book cover too. But again, always double check the copyrights within some of those. Mm, good, good. Anyone else have something to add to that? We've got about five minutes left. Well, I guess if your husband looks like Jason Momoa, you can take all the pictures you, <laughs> you want to. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, this is a good 
good tip from Sandra Hart. That's why I take copious photos on my research trips. Yeah, we, um, I write historical in Texas and my husband and I took a trip in, in May up to um, Palo Duro Canyon because the next book is going to have something to do with Comanches. And um, uh, I have like 600 pictures from that trip. <laughs> you know, I, I agree with you there, Sandra. All right. Um, well, I thought there were going to be a ton of questions in here, but it really was just a lot of commenting back and forth from everybody, which is great that we're, we're, oh, here's another one. Deposit photo is great. And I also use Unsplash. So if anybody is looking, um, Adobe Photos is a place, but you have to either have a subscription or pay. I'm trying to remember the other one I've used before. Like some of them you can just pay like, five or six dollars or something but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> deposit photo about once a year they do mm -hmm. like um, a massive credits purchase yeah for like 80 bucks you get 100 credits mm -hmm. like I, I bought 80 or 100 credits three years ago and I still have 50 left yeah yeah <laughs> so it, it takes a while to use that up that's true yeah. I think I've done that too I came across on an email that I follow somebody had recommended. So I grabbed it too. Well, um, let's see. I guess we have time for one more question. Um, Hope, where do you get your inspiration or your ideas from? Um, it, it, truly, each book has come differently. Like I said, the first one was a daydream, and um, which became one of the early scenes in Irish Encounter. Um, the the suspense came from a bike ride when I was riding near where we live out in the country, and then um, the Forever Music, which is the first one in the series. Um, I, I like to play the piano, and I also talk to myself when I'm playing, and I would. Um, sort of chastise myself when I'd hit a wrong note. And all of a sudden I started thinking about what if a piano teacher did that and somebody heard her talk. And so that became one of the early scenes in Forever Music. So ideas for me can come from, well, truly come from whatever is going on in my life at the time. Yes, yes that's true. What about you, Cindy? Um... What was, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Just, I was where do you to get hope. your inspiration or the ideas for your book? Try to, try to say one minute's worth. I've got, I've gotten my inspiration just be, well, I, you know, how you talk to yourself in the bathroom and you think something and then a story comes to your mind and my head is so full of stories. And sometimes that's all it takes is one little, what if that happened? What would this be like if? You know, when I wrote New Embrace, I thought, what if you had an abused wife whose, whose husband dies and not just rebuild her life? And what if she came in contact with, and it's because my son is a veteran, she comes across and, and meets a veteran, but the veteran has got a missing leg. And he just, she wants it to find her new normal, and he just wants to be normal. And I thought, oh, wow, these could be very interesting characters. So it didn't take me, you know, I... I could really see their angst. And then I had to imagine a lot of their angst because I'm not married to anybody abusive. I had to, to do some research. I had to, to talk to people, you know, that I know can that have been in situations like that and really tried to draw out uh, how they might think and how they might okay. feel. Good, good. Penny, what about you? Um, I think a lot of mine is based on wanting to bring hope into people's lives. So the situation in the first uh, Abbott Island series is about a young woman who was being abused by her boyfriend and she escaped to the island. And another thing I wanted to show was that there are good guys out there because I have a good okay. guy at home. And yes. and I really want to share that with people, that there is hope. With oh, good. That's lovely. What about you, Sharon? They're just random ideas. I've tried to think, wow, what, what's the inspiration behind this or that? There might have been moments in my own life that inspired certain scenes or conversations, but the overall ideas are just 
I, I, I guess they're just, they're God ideas. That's really yeah. the, only, the yeah. only way I can give credit is, is they come from him. Cause I can't pinpoint, uh, Oh, that sparked this theme or I, I just, yeah. So that's, that's kind of where it falls. Okay. What about you, Melissa? Uh, most of it is just like the people that I interact with every, you know, like friends, um, their, their lives, uh, things that I started out when I started out writing, I wanted to focus on women who, whose stories never really get told. So we have, we, we have, there's a lot of military romance out there, right? Some of it's a little, mm, but, um, I wanted to talk about the late, the people that are supporting our veterans. Nobody ever really talks about them. Nobody talks about how they feel when they're at home. So I wrote a character that was, and I have a lot of friends around me, or at least I did at the time, that were military spouses. And I asked them to write down like some key points that you wish people really understood um, that uh, we, we tend to look over. So single moms, one character is a single mom. This another one, she's a military spouse. Another one, um, she had everything all, and then all of a sudden she had nothing except for her children. You know, just people that inspire me uh -huh. and their stories and, you know, have, mean a lot to me. That's, That's where I get good. it. That's great. Well, I think we are at the end of our time. It feels like this was 10 minutes long and we're already done. But thank you all for your good attention and your good questions. And thank you to our authors for sharing from your heart. We appreciate it. And um, 